Oh, hello. Am I through to Stoke Norton uh, Kingdom Hall? Yes, uh, this is your human secretary, yes. Oh, right. I was wondering if somebody could help. Um, maybe not you, maybe you're busy at the moment, but I'm looking at one of your books I've got off one of the carts. What does the Bible really teach? I got it quite a few years ago, actually, and I'm going through it, and I'm a bit puzzled about Jesus' resurrection. And I was wondering mm -hmm. if somebody could help. Because, I mean, I mean, one of the things that puzzles me, it doesn't address one... 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 5 where in a post-resurrection context Paul writes about 30 years after the resurrection to Timothy and 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 5 Paul says there's one mediator between God and men the man Christ Jesus and man there is anthropos in Greek it means means a man um, but I was told at the carts he's he's not a man he's um in a post-resurrection state, he becomes the Archangel Michael. He's no longer a human being. That's right, yes. Right. I, mean, I mean, what would be the response? Because your book, What Does the Bible Really Teach, doesn't address 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5, where Jesus is called man, anthropos in Greek. Oh, off the top of your head, I wouldn't be able to answer that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just bear with me a second. Let me just get the iPad. Probably set my phone. OK. Wouldn't it be better to get, a, get a, to get a Bible? Pardon? Wouldn't it be better to get a Bible than I'm an iPad? I've got it on my iPad, yeah, I've got it in... I've got it in... We are, we are moving with the times. We've got everything downloaded oh. now. Oh, right. And we've even got a research guide. The only problem is, I can't even find my iPad. Bear with me. I've got it. I go upstairs because my wife's busy hoovering. It's all right, my daughter just cut me hair. I'm one of them rare people who's had a haircut in the troubled times. <laughs> right. I mean, if you want some time, you can always get back to me and prepare something oh, and get I back just, to I me. I just want to check my phone. Just bear with me. I, won't yeah. I just want to check it up. See what it says. Bible. First Timothy. What is it? Chapter two, verse five. Yes. First Timothy, chapter two, verse five. Right, Timothy. And thank you for your help, ah, by the way. Right, right. I'll tell you what we've got here. It says here. And this is where our research guy. If you want to download this, by the way, if I, you've got I, an iPad I or uh, don't have an iPad know? and I don't have access to the internet at home. Sorry. Well, I'll tell you what. You're a rare individual, as I admire. I wish I'd never got it, but believe it or not, now we're all locked down. It's absolutely brilliant. Yeah. I'll tell you what our research guy says here. Uh, one mediator between God and man. He is the mediator of the new covenant. However. Uh, that's Hebrews 9.15 and Hebrews 12.24. However, Moses is also spoken of as a mediator, the mediator of the law covenant, from Genesis and Galatians 3.19. So how then is Jesus' role as mediator unique? The original language word translated mediator is a legal term. It refers to Jesus as a legal mediator, or in a sense an attorney of the new covenant that made possible the birth of a new nation the Israel of God, Galatians 6.16. Right, now... Uh, bu, 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 bu. What does Jesus' role as mediator involve? You're not going to be well, giving me a verbal there, jihad. Pardon? You're not going to be giving me a verbal jihad, are you? No, 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 no. I'm just writing down what he says here. Um, I don't think that's relevant. Why is the word man, which is anthropos in Greek, used... In a post-resurrection context, Paul writes to Timothy about 30 years after the resurrection, somewhere in the late 50s to about AD 60, sometime around then. He says there is one mediator between God and men, the man, that's Anthropos in Greek, Christ Jesus. Now, why is Christ called a man, you see? Because when I was looking at your book, What Does the Bible Really Teach? On page 46, it says... However, on the third day after Jesus died, his heavenly father resurrected him back to spirit life. That's right, yes. Right, so if he became a spirit at his resurrection, then why does 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 5 call him the man Christ Jesus, you see? I'm a bit puzzled. Because he's the mediator. So 
famous. Moses was the mediator between the nation of Israel that came out of Egypt and the great crowd that came out with them. He was the mediator of the law covenant. Uh, yeah, Jesus Christ, by his, re re his it doesn't say it doesn't say he was past tense the man Christ Jesus. It doesn't use a past tense at one Timothy two five. It uses a present tense. It's saying that when Paul wrote to Timothy, he is present tense, the man Christ Jesus. He's a man. Present Maybe tense. I, I've no idea. I have no idea, my friend. I can't answer that one for you, but I can put you on to somebody that might be able to yeah. answer you. Yes. You, do you want me to give you my telephone number, or has it come up? Please, please. please. Let me just get a pen. Yeah. Just stay with me. Yeah. I can go in the kitchen, though, because my wife has finished doing it. Yeah, sure. mess on the floor. I'm, I'm quite happy for you to pass my details on. That would be wonderful. Thank you. Give your first name. My name is Robert. Robert, so that's my middle name. <laughs> that's it. Um, there was a second verse. There are a couple more verses, but another verse is Matthew twenty six sixty four, which talks. I'm, I'm just writing this one first down. First Timothy two five. Two, five is it? Yep. And another verse is Matthew twenty six. Verse 64, Jesus said to him, it is as you said, nevertheless, I say to you, thereafter, you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Obviously, alluding to um, Jesus's future ascension into heaven in Acts chapter 1, verse 9 to 11, where he's taken up to heaven in a cloud. And then he talks about his second coming here and he says he's going to come the same way whether the clouds are literal or whether they're figurative or something else is beside the point. The fact is that this is talking about the second coming of Christ. A future tense is used. Hereafter, you will see, you will is future tense. Mm -hmm. But at the second coming, Jesus refers to himself as the son of man. Now, yeah. why would an angel, a non-human spirit creature, refer to himself as the son of man when son of man means to have the nature of men to be a human I being no the only thing i can say to you is that the translations of the bible now actually translate the greek words as they actually really meant so that when matthew wrote it matthew called him the son of man well son of man means to have the nature of men to have the nature uh, of well, jesus human beings jesus before he before he was on earth he was a um, Jehovah God's first creation and when he came down he took on the form of a man through the Virgin Mary and so he had to die as a man he had to give up he had to buy back what Adam discarded in the Garden of Eden and that was the right, uh, the right of living forever on earth well and I think you'd have to prove that to me you'd have to show me that because to my knowledge there's no verse in the Bible that says that Christ is the first created Proto proto tokos firstborn does not mean first created. Yeah, I've just said proto tokos firstborn does not mean first created. First created is a different Greek word. Proto kiskos. Chris maybe so, maybe so. But I mean, the point is, um, to, to, to what reason are these questions being asked? If you don't mind me asking. Well, I'm looking at the Bible during this lockdown. I'm reading the Bible and I've started reading your book. What does the Bible really teach? And I've just got a lot of questions and no one. I just want someone to help. If if if, if you could pass my details on, if someone could help, that would be wonderful. I'll do that for you, Robert, by all means. Thank you. So it's Matthew chapter 26. What verse was that again? Verse 64. Verse 64. Yeah. OK, then. I'll phone a friend up, tell me. He, um... He is one of our regular pioneers, and he is very, very good on these kind of okay. things. Um, please ask um, him, do not... He, he, like yourself, he's a very deep student of the Bible. Great. Please ask him, do not voicemail me, but I can respond to a text. The best thing for him to do is just text me in advance, give me notice as to when he'll be calling me. Okie dokie. Thank you. Uh, I just sent him to text you. I'm just writing this all down for you, Robert. Okay, my family, you with me. And you're Stoke... You're Stoke... Um... Norton. Norton. Thank you very much. All the best then. Bye. Okay, then take care of us. Bye bye now. Bye.